Alleluia. Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Alleluia. Good morning, friends, and welcome to our Easter Sunday worship here at Waterville UCC. We are so excited to have you all with us virtually. Um, if there is anyone that can't join us or couldn't join us on time, I hope that you enjoy our post uh, actual worship worship. We've already met for a sunrise service at Hedda Falls. And thank you to all who, who joined us for that and woke up pretty early. Um, I didn't think I would be able to do an Easter worship with this church. Uh, and I am very, very blessed and feel incredibly lucky to be spending my first Easter worship with all of you. Seeking to walk in the way of Jesus, we are an open and affirming church, faithfully using what we have and who we are to serve those on the margins of our society and our community. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Roll away your stone now, roll away my Together we will see what we will find Don't leave me alone at this time For I'm afraid of what I will discover this time Cause you told me that I would find a home Within the fragile substance of my soul But I have filled this void with things unreal And all the while my character it steals And darkness is a harsh term, don't you think And yet it dominates the things I see It seems that all my bridges have been burned you say that's exactly how this grace thing works It's not the long walk home that will change this heart But the welcome I receive with every star And darkness is a harsh term, don't you think? Yet it dominates the things I see And darkness is a harsh term, don't you think And yet it dominates the things I see Hide your fire, this your my desires, and I will give them up to you this time around. And so I will be found, my stake stuck in this ground, marking the territory of this newly impassioned soul. Your fire, these here are my desires, and I will give them up to you this time around. But you, you've gone too far this time, you have neither reason or rhyme with which to take this home that's so rightfully. Good morning, happy Easter, everyone. Please join me in the call to work, worship. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Let the people say, 
God's, God's steadfast love endures forever. This is God's doing. It is, it is marvelous in, in our sight. sight. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us, Let us rejoice, rejoice and be glad in it. For Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is risen indeed. Join me in the unison prayer of invocation. God of life, break open our hearts to perceive your goodness and mercy and creation. Break open our minds when we have closed ourselves off to the needs of this world. Break open our whole lives to live into your created intention for us to love, love you and, and to love, love our neighbor, neighbor as ourselves. Break us open, God, as dawn breaks across the land. In the name of the risen Christ, who has broken open the tomb, we pray. Amen. Thank you so much, David. Ah, oh, we got such good music today, folks. <laughs> who doesn't love an Easter hymn? And who doesn't love a resurrection story? So this, David doesn't love him. Ah, oh, well, you're a bummer, man. So this is a pretty common Easter, Easter story for us to share. And I know that Pastor Mark used to as well. So of course we're going to read The Very Hungry Caterpillar. And we're going to listen for stories about resurrection, about new life, and about the beautiful creation that God has made for us. So this is The Very Hungry Caterpillar. And if you know it, please join in at home, but on mute. The Very Hungry Caterpillar by Eric Carl. It's also a very fresh book, so kind of hard to keep open. There we go. Crisp. In the light of the moon, 
a little egg lay on a leaf. One Sunday morning, the warm sun came up and pop, out of the egg came a tiny and very hungry caterpillar. He started to look for some food. On Monday, he ate through one apple, but he was still hungry. He was still hungry. On Tuesday, he ate through two pears. But, everybody, he was still hungry. On Wednesday, he ate through three plums. But he was still hungry. Can you see the holes where the caterpillar ate through them? I don't know how well those show up on the screen. There's a little hole there. On Thursday, he ate through four strawberries, but he was still hungry. On Friday, he ate through five oranges, but he was still hungry. My goodness. On Saturday, here we go. I've had Saturdays like this. He ate through one piece of chocolate cake, one ice cream cone, one pickle, one slice of Swiss cheese, so they probably wouldn't have noticed another hole, one slice of salami, one lollipop, one piece of cherry pie, one sausage, one cupcake, and one slice of watermelon. Oh, there he is down there. That night he had a stomach ache. The next day was Sunday again. The caterpillar ate through one nice green leaf. And after that, he felt much better. Now he wasn't hungry anymore. And he wasn't a little caterpillar anymore. He was a big, fat caterpillar. He built a small house called a cocoon around himself. He stayed inside for more than two weeks. Then he nibbled a hole in the cocoon, pushed his way out, and he was a beautiful butterfly. The end. It is a good story. Let's pray together, friends. Lord of Easter resurrection, help us to see all of the things in the world that remind us of new life. All of the beautiful creatures, colors, and delicious foods of earth. Like this hungry little caterpillar, we are hungry. Hungry for a world that seeks and honors that beauty in animals, in insects, in the environment, and in each other, each and every day. Remind us that within each of us, even if we think we're just a little caterpillar, is a gorgeous butterfly, reborn through the love of Jesus that we remember today. Amen. So, we are now going to share our prayers on this Easter morning with the risen Lord. There are many ways that we offer our prayers to God here at Waterville UCC. In this digital Easter, the second we have, we have uh, held together, we can share our prayers in the chat on Zoom. Those prayers are captured and entered into our e-news on Wednesday for folks to continue to pray with you throughout the week. There will also be a point to share your prayers aloud and uh, a moment for silent prayer as well. Together, folks, let us be in a spirit of prayer.
on this Easter morning, we welcome you, Jesus, into our lives. We welcome your resurrection, for it is life-changing, life-giving, and life-sustaining. We welcome the hope it brings to our world. We welcome the joy it brings to our darkness. We welcome the empty tomb, for we know that it means you are on the loose. Lord, may your resurrection give life to those who feel lifeless, those who are just going through the motions, and those who have had the death of a loved one. We offer prayers of concern and consolation for Madison Dean and the whole Dean and Scott families upon the loss of Madison's boyfriend, Alex Scott, from complications of cystic fibrosis. Lord, may your resurrection give renewed spirit and joy to those known to us who are ill, those who are recovering from hospital visits, those who are still in the hospital, and those who are battling cancer. For Ann Hodgman, Tom Baker, Hans Haas, Pete Downing, and Beth Campbell. Hear now our prayers of joy and concern for those known to us, as your spirit moves in us to give them a voice and a name. Prayers for my father-in-law, Roger Pooler, as he deals with the infusions he is receiving to help with his medical condition. This is our prayer. Continuing prayers for people who are experiencing hunger and homelessness. This is our prayer. Okay. Lord, may your resurrection give hope to those who are mired in despair, who feel hopeless, and who have given up all hope. Lord, may your resurrection give, those, give joy to those who have felt no joy, who have lost their joy or have had their joy snuffed out after long periods of social distancing and separation, who have longed to see a world reborn with new life where everyone is safe, healthy, loved, and valued. Hear now our silent prayers offered to you with a heart filled with the love of God, the resurrection love of this Easter morning. In our story, we feel for those faithful women who went to visit you, Jesus, just after sunrise on that Sunday morning and fled, trembling and bewildered and afraid. You were not there. Forgive us when we sanitize your death and forgive us too if we belittle your resurrection. We offer a prayer asking for forgiveness and a prayer of promise holding the words of our resurrected Messiah in our heart and sharing them now aloud in whatever language or version we connect with in our hearts, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, on this life-giving, life-rebirthing of Easter morning, thank you for your gifts to this church to help support the work of this church for those on the margins of our community. I offer now a blessing on these offerings. Please join me in prayer. God of great gifts, this morning we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you thanks. With resurrection humming in our hearts, our minds are tuned to your song of peace. We joyfully present these gifts to you, a tangible chorus of thanksgiving, a harmony of hope for your kingdom to come. Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from the book of Luke, chapter 24, verses 1 to 12. But on the first day of the week at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and then on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James and the other women with, with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home, amazed by what had happened. Bless the ending of this word, God's word today. Amen. I didn't do this intentionally, but I love how it looks like the light from the sun is shining through the opening of the tomb on this slide. Actually, I, I could lie and say it was totally intentional. It wasn't, it was a good mistake. <laughs> Friends, I, my message is brief this morning because I wanna hear from you all. There's so much that we could say about this reading, many, many things. That's why it's so fruitful and we continue to come back to it year after year. We could talk about the faithfulness of the women in the story. Luke highlights women throughout his gospel. Women are the first to learn of the resurrection in this telling. And women are the first to preach the resurrection. They tell the other disciples about what they have seen. Christ is not there in the tomb. We could talk about the doubt of men. Surely no one's ever experienced that. It seemed to them an idle tale. Just women, they're crazy. We could talk about the anxiety of Peter as well. There is a whole 
sermon in that. A man who had denied Christ three times when he said he would never do that and leaves shocked and appalled at what he has done. But then hears that Jesus isn't in the tomb. He needs to go and see that Christ's resurrection happened just as he said it would, just as he said that Peter would deny him. So he runs to the tomb. But what I want to focus on today and ask you to meditate on and share out with us are the words, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He's not in the tomb. He is risen. Don't look in the tomb. Don't look in the place full of death. This is a place for the dead. Don't look here. That's why that picture speaks so much to me. It's about looking out of the tomb, not staring at an empty tomb with grave clothes only. Look outside. God's will has been done on earth as it is in heaven. God has lowered God's self to humanity's level to draw close to us. So close that God suffers death on the cross. Something undeniably human. All to remind us of God's love, how much God wants us to come close. You see, the cross in ancient Rome, wasn't something where someone was hung 15 feet up in the air. Usually a cross was meant that the person's eyes weren't much higher than your own. So that as you walked by them on the road, you would look at them. You would look at them, this criminal, and think, I better not do what they did. God has lowered God's self to our eye level and died on a cross because God wants us to draw near. That's not the end of the story. As we hear Jesus' last words on, fr on Good Friday, it is finished. That part of Jesus' work is done. Now we need to look out of the tomb. We need to look with resurrection eyes. We need to see the resurrection that's all around us and see it as good work of God in our lives the ways that we have experienced or witnessed rebirth, new life, metaphorically and literally, the places we see new life every day, the times that we have turned our eyes away from the tomb and the folded grave clothes and out to the world. I'd like for us to pause for one minute and to think about an instance of this that you have experienced or witnessed in your life. A time that you have seen or experienced resurrection. Time that you have seen or experienced new life. When you have decided to look away from the tomb and look out at the world. A time you might use to preach resurrection yourself. So we'll take one minute. I'll watch the clock. I'd like to ask for any volunteers. 
people who might feel called to share this story, to preach a little bit, just maybe 15, 10 seconds, doesn't have to be long, of resurrection. I want to hear your stories. You don't need to just hear me. Easter is about sharing the good news, and I want all of us to share it together. So if anyone's feeling brave, go ahead and unmute yourself on Zoom. We'll do our best not to speak over each other and share with us your story of resurrection. Spring, when the flowers start to come up through the snow or the leaves, it's a real sign of resurrection, of a new season coming to the forefront, much desired after a long, cold winter. Amen. Amen. I have just a couple short ones. Um, I think probably resurrection sword or new birth was the first birth I saw as a nursing student. So that's been 29 years ago. And that young man is now 29. And his mother doesn't even know that I was present at the birth, I don't think. But I see her at the hospital because she is a nurse there. But um, just how empowering that was to see new birth. And the other one, I guess, was when I was in high school, I lost both my grandfathers. And at the time, my church did not have a youth group. So one of the evangelical churches in town had one, and um, which I attended regularly with a lot of my high school classmates. Um, when my first grandfather died, though, we were at the funeral. Um, my sister was upset with me because I wasn't bawling my eyes out at the loss of my grandfather. And I told her that, you know, I felt that he was in a better place, that he was resurrected, that he was in heaven looking down upon us. And she does not even remember that because we had this discussion a couple of months ago and how upset I was that she had said that to me. But I really felt then the resurrection. Amen. Seeing God's world through the animals, the birds, the bees, all the animals that come out, especially springtime when the baby birds come. Amen. There, I loved how you put all this um, looking for, for um, life. And I, when I, um, I retired in December of 2019, and then a month later, I was commissioned as the faith community nurse for, for this community. And uh, one month after that, uh, the, you know, the pandemic was in full, full swing. And um, I felt like I'd gotten kind of a good start on, on doing what I was doing. Um, but it all came to an end. And you know, where everybody's pretty much stuck in their homes walk, watching Dr. Shaw. Um, and so um, one year later, uh, I was uh, called by Maine General and asked if I could be um, a vaccination nurse. So I actually had to think about this for a while because I really wasn't sure. I was like, you know, could I manage a new job? It, it, it was, you know, I had a lot of anxiety about it. You know, what were the expectations? Was I going to have to learn a computer system <laughs> and all this? But uh, I read, um, I follow faith community nurses um, on a, a, a platform and someone wrote one day, um, I urge all co faith community nurses to vaccinate in their communities. And I thought, yeah, I need to do that. And so I did, I went through Maine General's process for rehiring retired nurses and I started vaccinating and I cannot tell you how much joy it brings me just um, people are so thankful to be vaccinated. They're so thankful to be there. They're so thankful they have an appointment. And not only that, but I've met former coworkers. Um, either they're either working with me or they're coming in to be vaccinated. And um, it's, uh, it's just been really nice. I've also met former patients, especially former home care patients. And it's, um, you know, it's, it's, a very, it's turned into the, a very joyful time for me. I'm grateful for it. Amen. Does anyone else have a experience of resurrection? Well, As the um, chaplain at the cancer center in, in Augusta for the last 13 years, almost. 
I see a resurrection every time I'm meeting with a patient and they're getting near the end of life. And we have some, some sometimes some tough conversations, sometimes some very loving conversations about them meeting the end. And then a, a new drug will come along or a new treatment will come along and suddenly they're given an extension on life, be it an extra six months or an extra couple of years. And I really see that as a resurrection. This is part of God's plan. And so many times I've sat with patients who have been told there's nothing that can be done when they're first diagnosed. 10 years later, I'm still meeting with them. So I sort of see this as part of God's plan and a resurrection where people are given new hope. Amen. Amen. Now, friends, thank you so much to everyone that shared. And if you have a moment of resurrection that you want to share but didn't feel like unmuting yourself, so I certainly understand, please do put it in the chat. I would love to, I think we would all love to hear uh, where you see resurrection in your life. Well, all of these stories give witness to the resurrection spirit alive in the world. The fact that God's love is moving throughout creation, that God values every one of us, every inch of this world, every inch of our being. Now we have to not let these moments only arise on this day of rising, but every single day we need to see with resurrection eyes because Christ is no longer in that dark tomb. God tells us to look elsewhere. He's not in the tomb. May we walk out into the light, blinking in wonder, allowing Easter to readjust our eyes to the glory of the risen Christ all around us. Amen. I want to thank Reverend Joe Dressler for joining us today to lead us in the communion portion of our worship. If you don't have your communion elements handy, now is the time. Go and grab those. Uh, and I will hand things over to Reverend Dressler. Thank you so much. Yes. Please join me in the confession of sin. We are called to examine our faithfulness to God's covenant with us. God, in whose presence we gather, promises us grace and pardon when we acknowledge our weakness and shame. Let us confess our sin to Almighty God. Please join with me. Eternal God, whose word is a lamp for our feet and a light for our path. We recognize and confess that we have failed to respond fully to your gracious presence in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, you have offered us new life, fulfillment, and the freedom to serve you. We confess that we are captive to sin, that our sin binds us with false pride, and that the wrong we do is made worse by the good we leave undone. Reconcile us to you and to all people. God of mercy, forgive all our sin and strengthen us anew for life as you intend it. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, amen. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who repent of their sin and desire to live in peace with one another. As forgiven and reconciled people, let us offer ourselves and our gifts to God Please join me in the communion reading. For I receive from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. 
For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Through the broken bread, we participate in the body of Christ. Through the cup of blessing, we participate in the new life Christ gives. This is the living bread, the body of Christ. Let us eat in remembrance of him. This is the saving cup, the blood of Christ. Let us drink in remembrance of him. Let us pray. Please join with me. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Jesus Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth with courage and in peace that we may make your work in the world our own. Amen. It's a good hymn. Oh, it's a good hymn. I hope you sang every 10 syllables of Alleluia at the top of your lungs. Oh, friends, please join me in prayer. Lord, help us to see the most incredible of moments, the greatest twist of any plot through fresh eyes. 
on this bewildering yet most joyful of mornings. Help us to see it through the tear-filled eyes of those women at the tomb. Help us to see it through the disbelieving eyes of the men, some of whom came running. And help us to glimpse it through your own eyes, which must have blinked into the early morning sunlight on that first Easter day from out of complete and utter darkness and refo refocused and creased with a smile. Amen. Mm -hmm.